Better Beach Volleyball Podcast. My name's Mark Burick. This is Brandon Joyner. And we howdy, talk howdy. Everything that uh, has to do with getting better at beach volleyball. And today we are going to talk about, well, we're going to give you a little tournament checklist. What to eat, what to bring to your tournament so that you're prepared. And, uh, you know, some tips that we've learned along the way for how to last uh, for the entire day. Uh, and that's it. You know, we're, uh, this should air right around when tournament season is starting, and uh, it's going to be useful. So this is one of those ones that, if you guys are watching, save it. You know, make sure that you subscribe and share this with all your friends. But for this episode especially, save it so that you can listen to it throughout your season and make sure that you're actually prepared to last a full tournament day, um, and that you're doing the right things for your body so that you don't gas out at the end. We've seen too many people who should have won championships end up cramping, getting too tired, too exhausted, and just can't finish the day. And there are ways to mitigate that. Yeah, it's, uh, it's something that I wish I had focused on younger in my career. You know, mm -hmm. uh, I, I, for whatever reason, I never really paid attention to it. And unfortunately, I, like, especially when I was playing on the NVL and I was an up and comer, mm -hmm. uh, I got this stigma around myself where I, I couldn't last in tournaments, you know, and especially when I was reaching out to partners and I was trying to, cause my finishes were still good and I was playing at a really high level and I would reach out to these high level defenders and I would kind of get the same answer every single time. Like, Hey man, I'm, I'm definitely considering you, but every time you make it to a quarter semi, you cramp out, you, you look yeah. exhausted and you're not able to finish those matches. And those are the matches that I need you to be able to finish. Um, and so it, it's definitely become a, a topic that I am still researching. I'm still learning a lot about. I'm excited for today to hear your ideas on it. Um, I have some ideas myself, but um, yeah, it's, it's something you have to figure out because we spend all this time training and, and we get better at the touch, but if we're not able to fuel ourselves to last in a tournament, then it's almost for nothing. So definitely, definitely. Um, I'm waiting for you on Instagram live. I'm ready. I'm go there, give me that invite. Uh, Instagram Live today, we are talking about tournament day checklist, what to eat, what to bring, and how to last for a full tournament. All right. I think I'm good to, good to go. Yeah. So first, you know, here's, here's one of the common ones. Um, you can turn that volume down, and then we'll be set. Yeah. Okay. One of the common ones that we talk about is you know, what are we going to do for the days leading up to the tournament? Just, you know, before we talk about that actual day of the tournament, you got to be prepared. You got to have your bags packed and you got to have your, I guess, metaphorical bags packed, uh, what you put inside your body okay, and how you treat your body. So different people do this differently, but there are concepts that we want to talk about and knock out. When we when it comes to conditioning okay conditioning when we're, we're going to talk about volume of conditioning and later in your week as you lead up to the tournament that volume has to lower and when we say volume when it comes to training it means the number of reps that you're doing so a high volume squat workout might have 45 squats in it you know maybe three sets of 15 right but a low volume might be three sets of three something really small where uh you can engage the nervous system cns central nervous system to make sure that it's primed for you to jump and for you to uh, well to to jump higher and you can continue to increase your strength without exhausting your muscles and without doing uh, considerable damage to your muscles. And when we say damage, we mean it in a good way, uh, because anytime you're working out, you're breaking up muscle. And when you work out for high volume, you're creating a lot of shredding and hoping that those get to rebuild. So all players, as you're going into your tournament, decrease the volume. 
That means that you can have a jump intensive practice all you want on Monday, Tuesday, depending on your recovery, maybe Wednesday. Thursday's that last day where you wanna be doing a decent amount of jumping. Even then you wanna start uh, tapering. And on Friday, what most of the players do, if, if there's, so there's an AVP tournament, right? We talk about Friday, most players are showing up Thursday uh, to be in that main draw. You're getting on the court for 45 minutes, done. And you're not trying to exhaust yourself. This is not your time to do sprints. This is not your time to get a hundred spike attempts. All you're trying to do is prime yourself, get a feel for your surroundings and, and keep your touches fresh. But that last practice, the one that's the day before, you, if you want, you can spend a lot of time on the court, but number one, you don't want to dehydrate yourself. You don't want to tire out your legs, right? And you definitely, definitely don't want to be doing a lot of sprinting, a lot of jumping, or a high volume workout on the day before the tournament. Very, very important that people recognize this. And for, uh, I'm going to just kind of ask you some questions because um, I consider you to be the expert on this topic. Um, what what is the reasoning behind that because there like there are some days where i feel i almost feel better when i have a little bit of tightness you mm. know um and so like what's the balance of because i i go through there's there's three phases that i'm thinking about you know there's one where i'm too sore i've mm. had that there's one where I'm too loose. Like I'm almost jello-y like where maybe I didn't, I didn't jump for three or four, three days, four days before the tournament. So I feel like I'm almost, I lost all explosiveness. And then there's that Goldilocks perfect scenario where I have a little bit of tightness in my legs, but it's not enough to fatigue me, you know? Mm -hmm. And obviously I think finding that, that middle ground, but is, is that something that people should try to be feeling or is it, is it just listening to your body? like the number one thing that once once it's tournament day so there's two two separate answers once it's tournament day acknowledge your body and how it feels but then don't give it any credence that you know whatever your body feels like don't say that you can't perform a certain thing because this is how your body is once you start changing how you play based on how you feel you are not doing what you've trained your nervous system and your skills and your techniques to do anymore. And a lot of people feel like that. Well, I'm exhausted today, so I'm just going to shoot. Mm -hmm. Once you put that into your head, you've changed every single thing that you've trained for. You know, you didn't train so that you could be exhausted and then shoot. You trained so that you can get up and hit when you need to hit. So the day of the tournament, no matter how your body feels, acknowledge it. Say it's okay, however you feel, but then do your same warm up, go through your same decisions. Don't let that feeling on that day change what you're doing. Hmm. So that's that's the first answer to that question because too many people get that so much in their yeah. heads based on how they're feeling and like, oh man, my arm's too loose. And it's just like, my arm's loose. It's not too mm -hmm. loose. My arm's loose. I'm a hitter. So that's, right. that's going to be that first one. Second one I like is, that. Okay. second one is you need to experiment. Okay. So there are a few different ways. Uh, one of them is we have a long preseason. We have a lot of time in the off season, right? So I would tell people, first of all, we're not going to do anything that's going to be eight to 12 reps as a volleyball player. If you want to do some of that stuff for upper body, fine to, you know, take care of your ego and get your pecs up or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> but we want max strength and then we want speed. The way to develop speed strength is between 10 and 40% of your maximum, one rep maximum, and then moving that as quickly as you can. So that'd be like we were doing the other day where we were taking 95 pounds on a squat rack. And mm -hmm. we had six sets of two at a maximum speed jump 
literally jumping with the squat rack on your back or the squat bar on your back. Okay. Next That's week's it. the squat rack. <laughs> We're going to take it off. <laughs> uh, so that's speed strength, taking something below your well, below your maximum and moving it as quickly as you can. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. And then there's maximum strength where you're looking for very low reps. We're talking one to six repetitions in a set. And that's when you're trying to move heavy. And we're saying north of 85% of your one rep max. So the most that you could squat is 100 pounds you should be squatting somewhere between 85 and 95 pounds uh, for those very few reps. Now, the day before, you can, there's something called central nervous system priming, where you're telling your muscles, hey, we're, we're gonna teach them how to move extremely fast, um, recruit all of the muscle fibers, and you can do that either by using that speed strength and saying, all right, I got six sets of two jump squats the day before, and then I'm out of the gym. Of course, you want to do your warm up, not one of those extensive warm ups, but make sure your mobility is on point and then move quick. Get out of there in 30 minutes. If you're spending more than 30 minutes lifting or doing any of those gym exercises, get out of there. Um, or you could do just six sets of one or that's yeah six sets of mm -hmm. one at a at a maximum uh at a maximum weight somewhere where you're talking again like 90 to 95 percent right that won't exhaust you and it doesn't actually shred muscles where you're looking to repair them again what it does is it teaches the nervous system to recruit all of the muscles when you're doing that movement and so then you can jump higher the next day without feeling that exhaustion that being said, that's for somebody who's in really good shape. They're already right. training like an athlete. So along the way, when we're in preseason, experiment with how you feel the next day. And this is the simplest journal you can take, right? See if speed strength, what we talked about, the 95 pounds, right? Low weight and moving it fast. Measure that the next day. So after you do that, six sets of two with 40% under 40% uh, of your one rep max and moving as fast as you can, the next day, go out and test your vertical. Mm -hmm. Go out and test your broad jump, right? Then go with six sets of one at a maximum, at a max strength. We're talking 95%. So the next week in your preseason, Let's say it's the same day. Go and do that workout. And then the following day, measure your vertical. And if you want, measure your vertical the day after and two days after. And see when you feel the best, when your recovery is. Okay. And then you're also going to run a couple of experiments where you get some of those more intense lifts where we're, that's where we're really actually adding the max strength and we're challenging and we're progressively overloading our body. That's when we say, okay, now what do I feel like two or three days later? But some people, you need your last heavy lift on that Tuesday. Some people on Wednesday don't really recommend it on the Thursday because this 48 hour window, that's when you're going to feel the most sore from intense workouts. I like that. I, I think those two answers um, that you went into, and sorry if I made you go on longer than you wanted to, but um, one kind of just understanding that your body's going to feel a certain way, but that can't change what you're trying to do. And then two, the experimentation. I think that that's something that a lot of people don't even think about, but it makes so much sense because like, it, it's so easy to realize that your tournament is your goal. Right. And so mm -hmm. a lot of us are like, you know what? I want to feel rested. I want to feel like I'm not sore at all. But if you don't ever play around with that idea and kind of see where your body operates the best, then you're, you're, kind, you're, you're never, you're never going to know, you know? Right. Um, so I, I like that. I think that that's, that's pretty smart. So thanks for sharing that. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm over here learning too, you know, I'm trying to get better at beach as well.
<laughs> Aren't we all? Aren't yeah. We all? Uh, so the next thing that we want to talk about now that we're talking about, okay, that the workout part, mm -hmm. right? Then it comes down to eating the way you need to eat. All right. And this is going to come in the forms of high carbohydrate diets. We need to get off of this idea that carbs are bad for you, especially when it comes time to acute performance. And by acute performance, I mean like within those couple of days. You know, if you're on a separate plan that requires you to be off of refined sugars and things like that, that's different. Sugar is, we should keep that in a separate category as sugar and carbohydrates. But sugar mm -hmm. is just kind of empty, empty calories. Good carbohydrates come in the form like fruit. Uh, they can come in the form of pasta. You know, there's not a lot of um, nutrients necessarily in pasta, but that is your energy source. And things like pasta, potatoes, those are harder for your body to break down. Mm -hmm. They last longer in your body. So they'll go into stores and then you can pull from those stores. Quick sugary things like fruit and Gatorade, it's okay to have those, right? But those are going to be short bursts of energy. Your body doesn't store those away in a good place like it does with some of the complex carbohydrates. So the day before, we recommend in general having a high carbohydrate diet. You know, the, something with pasta. A lot of people who choose pastas end up choosing a bunch of stuff like, you know, fettuccine alfredo, where you're dumping <laughs> cheese and you're dumping that cream onto it. Yeah. We want to think something that's light. Now, uh, you, we can't be entirely against dairy, but we do know that for most people, dairy is more difficult to break down in the stomach, so it will sit, and people end up having a heavy feeling. Yep. This is, again, when we tell people, hey, experiment. Write down what you eat just for one week. We're doing this. So our, our seven-day foundations, we're in the middle of this week right now, the Athletic Foundations program. And yesterday was day one. They got their first mobility workout, and they have the responsibility of recording everything they drink and recording everything they eat. All we're doing is looking at what they eat right now. I'm not trying to change what they do, but at least look mm -hmm. at it. And then the next day, whatever you ate, measure how you feel just give yourself an energy rating zero to ten and a performance rating zero to ten eventually you're going to start connecting what you eat with how you felt and performed the next day and for me i know for my body dairy heavy cheese creamy stuff i love it i will eat it i just won't eat it the day before a tournament I won't eat it the day before I want a really, really good practice and that that's my priority. And so people can ex start experimenting with that, just knowing that things like that will affect you better or worse. Yeah, yeah I, think, I think that heavy feeling is why a lot of people avoid the pastas. You know, I, I know for me specifically, I like that's, that's been something that I've, I've definitely fought with because pasta is one of those meals that I love it. <laughs> it's very tasty, but for a very long time, I was falling into that. And the funniest thing is when you go to a restaurant that serves pasta or something like that, not only is it most appealing to get that dish with all the dairy, the, the Alfredo, whatever it is, but also the servings are mm. just so big, you know? Yeah. So it's like now you're eating a fettuccine Alfredo that's just delicious, but it's got that dairy in it that's slowing you down a little bit, or it's just harder to digest. And then you're also eating probably more than you should as well. Mm -hmm. Is that okay? And well, I don't, I don't want to discourage people from overeating. Right. But we do want them to definitely fill up on the right things, yeah. you know, and then know that what's going to be in their stomach the next day um, you know, having a giant steak dinner that might be sitting in your stomach the next day if you don't leave enough time in the morning for your for your coffee run. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you, you got to make for your, measure for your beach warm up. Too. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so what? I just a a quick question for you. Um, if people are, let's say, 
gluten-free and mm. they want to avoid a lot of the pastas um yeah i know i know you said fruits are are good but what like what are some other car heavy carb foods that people can kind of decide to move <sighs> forward yeah right. yeah that, it becomes tough when you're, yeah. when you're gluten-free um you, you know vegetables don't have they're while they're great they don't have a ton of big storage capacity for you mm -hmm. uh potatoes is gluten in potatoes no i th i think that's okay i haven't mm -hmm. done my complete I research need, on on the I gluten and this um, is stuff I should know. but when i like when i think of when the foods that i think people avoid would be like big breads and mm -hmm. pastas mm -hmm. you know like big sandwiches or some kind of pasta dish and if you have that allergy um, or that problem, you should be experienced with how you should eat right. going into that. And it's something to pay attention to. And again, that's why I can't give a, a blanket. This is what you must do for everybody because we all have very different uh, genetic backgrounds and efficiencies and deficiencies mm -hmm. within our body. So you have to know what you're able to eat, but high carbohydrates for that's just going to be your energy store for a long term. So right. That's a, a pretty non-negotiable to, to get that fuel in. Um, and then as we're talking about food, so let's, so now we've talked about that fitness and the, the nutrition leading up to it. Mm -hmm. I would recommend setting a goal for that tournament. And this should be a skill-based goal. Uh, something like i am going to do this technically well that's my focus so that everybody can pick that and if you know who you're going to play study film start looking at a few hours of volleyball who you're about to play um people you know you're going to run into during that tournament and your own game so that you can just clean up and remind yourself of those good decisions and of course of course of course just good good high quality sleep no smoking no drinking the night before even though you think it might put you out harder uh, your rem your deep sleep is significantly lower so you spend less time in rem uh, when you when you're doing any of that so recommend you to get good sleep and uh don't don't compromise on sleep mm -hmm. and i i think that that's that's a good opportunity for your you and your partner you know especially when you're when you're watching film try to do it with with your partner so that you can start the vocabulary and the lingo that you plan on using throughout the match mm -hmm. you know a lot of us especially uh if you're if you're playing in a lot of local tournaments or something like that we live so close to the people that we're probably playing the tournament with or if not the partner, one of the partners is probably driving into town. And so getting that, getting in front of a computer TV and watching a couple games, whether it's a view or somebody else, hopefully it's people playing in the tournament, but it'll allow you to start having the conversations of what you plan on talking about the next day. You know, that way you're not figuring out how you guys can come together and make make all these game changes. You've kind of already established your mindset and idea of the game. Mm -hmm. um, I, I had this problem with uh, one of the first tournaments I played with Jake. Here it's uh, Great player. We were both very, very solid p players, but we had never had a conversation about like game plan tactics. And I realized in the tournament that our ideas of how we thought we could win games were pretty opposite. And if we could have met the night before, uh, like, I, I just think that we would have had a way better chance of making it through a qualifier because we still played well, but we just lost so many silly points because we didn't understand how to communicate with each other yet. And mm -hmm. now moving forward three years where I'm still playing with this guy a decent amount, um, it, we figured that out and it's, it just, it stinks that we didn't do it that first time. Um, cause that might've been our best option. So, um, I, I really like that getting together. I, I think that that would be huge. Yeah. And if not just zoom it. Yeah. yeah just technology is crazy. <laughs> I mean, it's so easy and it does help 
it's it's unfortunate that we need this, but it does help when you have a third party there, mm-hmm. somebody else who you trust, a coach like that should always be there. And if people can get over this barrier of of talking and getting your solutions out of your mind and then challenging the other person's solution until you come to a complete idea that you're going to implement. Just because you argue on ideas does not mean one person has to be wrong and one person has to be right. It just means that you both have maybe a good idea, but you have to decide together on how you're going to move forward with it. One person might not love it, but you have to decide together that that's where it's going to be. Mm -hmm. And if you can't do that, and if you're not comfortable with that talking quote unquote confrontation, you need to get comfortable with it because there will never be a progression of ideas. There'll be one person who creates ideas in their mind and then they hope that the other person keeps up. Mm -hmm. So make sure that you guys can just get over that fear of talking and one of the things that really 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 does assist in that is having a coach on your side and um our our players or members right now are using their virtual coaching meetings for that specifically when they're going into a tournament they're saying hey joe me and my partner want to get the use our 45 minute meeting so let's get on zoom together and look at some film and then at least a coach can just sit there and ask questions Even if they don't give you any of their ideas, they can ask the questions so that you're pulling the ideas out of your mind. So the other person's like, oh, you think that in that situation? Okay, Um, that's not where I'm at. (laughs) And then work it out from there. Don't stop until you've come with a a thing that you're gonna move forward with. All right, day of tournament. What's in your bag? Are we talking cooler too, or? Hell yeah, everything. Okay. Um, this is kind of so. For me, when I am going to the beach, I I do bring I I've gone back and forth, but I I bring some dried mangoes. I I bring some some type of nut mix, whether it's a trail mix or just some cashews or something like that. Um, and then I usually do like something that's worked for me is just straight deli meat. You know, it's something that's easy to eat. I I can eat it throughout the day. It, it allows me to kind of feel like I'm feeding myself. Um, and then I, I will also bring the, the Pedialyte and, uh, pickle juice. Um, but for me, it's it, it's kind of interesting because whenever I'm playing, I I lose my appetite a decent amount, um, and so I've had to play around with finding foods that my body wants, mm. and but also at the same time, like not letting it be like Skittles or a Reese's cup or something like that because my body always wants that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but um yeah so that that's kind of been my struggle and you know one of the things that when i first started playing the biggest issue that i the biggest mistake that i made is that i literally when i went to the grocery store i was like okay i i need pickle juice i need pedialyte <laughs> i didn't think of anything else but i was like i'm going to cramp tomorrow i know i'm going to <laughs> yeah. so i was already putting that motion into my head and then but I've realized that there's other things that I need to put in my bag that I need to make sure that I bring so that I'm not just trying to save myself because that's what I realized when I was just bringing the pickles and the pickle juice, the bananas, whatever, um, is I was almost preparing for (laughs) failure, you know? Um, so as I've gotten older, I've realized that, you know, that, that shopping list has to be a little bit more taken care of and a little bit bigger than you expect it to be. Um, especially for a full day tournament, these, these tournaments are crazy. If you're, if you're playing one or two matches and you can run back to the store or something like that, obviously you don't have to bring as much, but a lot of these tournaments, you're getting there at, at seven in the morning, you're not leaving until seven thirty eight 8 PM at night. And sometimes there's nowhere to go. So you're literally eating a protein bar for lunch 
and you're like, oh, it's a protein bar. Like, I'll be good. <laughs> so, yeah. And I'm still working on this. I think this is honest. This is one of my biggest issues is that I'm still, I haven't experimented enough on my end to really know what my checklist should be. Well, Brandon. I know. <laughs> You got we something have for me? We have your tournament eating checklist. Man. Yeah. I had, I had a feeling that was coming. <laughs> uh, that comes. So for everybody who is wondering, like, if you want to get this checklist, the tournament eating checklist, literally, it gives you meal plans, just example meals, how much of it. And it also gives you sheets and worksheets that you can write down and do your energy measurements. That comes in our coaching membership it's 39 bucks a month you get all those handouts you get every one of our skill courses it's sitting back there for you brandon Just use it. <laughs> I, I'll, I'll think about it no i'll, I'll get i'm gonna download it right after this <laughs> <laughs> um okay so when you're going shopping minimum three gallons of water planning on it minimum you if there's a place to refill that cool okay just get your gallon but you, you're going to be drinking close to three gallons and you have you want to at least have that okay you're going to need more fruit than you think you should eat in a day so whatever is, is the maximum amount of fruit that you've ever had in one day in your life start there have that ready. The quick access to carbohydrates and quick sugars is what you're going to continue to fuel uh, right before matches and during matches. You want to have that continuous thing. You know, when you look at the AVP and you really see them sitting on the side, they will sip a Gatorade or a BCAA or a little carbo carbohydrate infused drink. Um, and you'll see them snacking on some type of bar. And that's because you want to have accessible fuel. You don't want fuel that your body has to unlock because it takes longer for your body to break that down. So you don't have immediate access to that. So you should be having regular intake of things like light fruit, uh, if you must, a Gatorade so that it has sugar. And when you talked about Skittles, guys, if there is nothing else around, and you need to play a match right now and it's tournament day and you haven't eaten in an hour, two hours, throw those Skittles in your mouth and eat them. That sugar will last you the next set. And then if, if, if there is nothing else around, <laughs> throw that second handful of Skittles so that it can get you through that match and then get somebody to go to a grocery store for you. <laughs> so that you can get something decent okay but um can't can't overemphasize that enough mm -hmm. other things you know things to bring to a tournament for me sunscreen uh it should I didn't, be didn't even think about that i'm very type b as my think, tan line starting to come back already i always think somebody's gonna somebody else is gonna have sunscreen and hey if you're still single <laughs> It never, it never hurts to have a reason to go ask somebody for something. Yeah. <laughs> people helping people. People helping people. <laughs> Sunscreen, sunglasses. Uh, we already talked about about your water bottle. Uh, you must have a lot of fruit, but then you want to have some protein in there as well. Uh, people think about like eating light during the day, and then they have these salads, and these salads offer you no calories when you need calories. You're not trying to eat light during that day. You're trying to make sure that you have calorie intake. Um, so you have to, I would, if it's a salad, you know, make sure it's like mixed with quinoa or mixed with rice or something just because you like that flavor um, and a little bit of fruit and definitely some, some protein along the way. Uh, other things that we have are bands. I always have the circle hip bands. Mm -hmm. I always have a power band. Um, so it's something that I can do big stretches and distraction with. And I have uh, my rehab, my shoulder band. Those are things that I will not go to a tournament or a practice. Honestly, I don't travel without them. Those are always in the bottom of my backpack. I used to make fun of my mom uh, about her giant purse. And, you know, she's always, um, who is the, 
God, was it was it Mary Poppins who used to like pull a ladder out of her purse or something? <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know. Uh, I I I don't even really like saying it online because people real realize how how much of a like Harry Potter nerd I am. But Hermione has like the the endless purse. Okay. In the in the later movies where it's enchant such enchantment. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, and now I've, I've become my mother. <laughs> right. yeah, um, I, I think that those hip bands, the, the circular ones that you have, do you have one near you? Um, I don't see. It just I have happens no idea to be in the bottom of my backpack. Look at you. Um, if you're watching right now and you do not own these, I Ooh. think that this alone, if you do monster walks, sidesteps, um, L-steps, before practice before your workouts i can guarantee you that you're just gonna you're, you're gonna feel better mm -hmm. um i i usually do these before my trainings and my workouts and just using those if you do it for two weeks you are gonna feel like your hips your your butt everything is a lot stronger and yeah. it's crazy the amount of stability you can gain just from having that one tool so if you don't have it, go on Amazon right now, grab it. It's I guarantee you it will it will change your game. And I think we probably have an affiliate link we can send you. Go to <laughs> betterfeet.com forward slash shop and you will see the links to uh, our Amazon store and our all volleyball affiliate store. Uh, volleyball mm -hmm. is for everything volleyball. And we have a very specific selection in our store of things that we use we recommend for lifting programs for tournament days like the uh beach volleyball player package essentially so it's one page that it gives you everything that you should need as a volleyball player uh we spent some time putting that together and you can go to better at beach.com forward slash shop and you can check that out uh and just go to the amazon section so we talked about what to eat definitely know what we're drinking does caffeine help you yes definitely caffeine has been proven to increase sport performance you just have to know how you react to it don't over caffeinate know that when you caffeinate it has a dehydrating effect mm -hmm. it does not mean that it will completely dehydrate you one of its side effects is that it's a is that it makes you go to the bathroom a little bit more, okay? But you, the amount of water in an, like an American cup of coffee, an Americano, the amount of water in there compared to the amount of caffeine, you're still net positive on water. Will you have as much water in your body after that as if you drank the same amount of just water instead of coffee? No, you'll have slightly less. But even a cup of coffee, people talk about like it's dehydrating. It's still hydrating you. It's just you're drinking a ton and you're not getting to keep all of that water. So caffeine, it does help you with performance. Just make sure you don't pop on it too hard and make sure that if you're drinking stuff like pre-workout or coffee, that you're adding extra water. Because even though you think it feels like you're still hydrating, mm -hmm. it's not necessarily true. <laughs> I have story time with Brandon about his many cramping situations. There is one tournament in San Antonio where I, I thought I was being such a good boy and I was drinking Pedialyte after Pedialyte Gatorade and I wasn't mixing in like normal water. Mm. And I, I still had a full body cramp and I was asking the, like the trainers and PTs afterwards, I was like, man, I've been drinking Pedialyte all day. So I, you can't stress enough how important it is for you to really focus on like, I've gotten to the point now where if I mix something in, I mm. don't count it towards my water intake. You know, I have my gallon jug of water. That's my goal to finish. And if I decide to like make a pre-workout drink or if I'm putting aminos in there, then I try not to count it towards my overall water intake because Smart. just that little mixture is it, it's still helping you, but it's not hydrating you the way that you, the way that it, it should. 
you know, so like there's all these other things that go into it with sugars and, and stuff like that with the Pedialyte. Um, but you like, I think, I think it even says it on the directions that you're supposed to be mixing it in with water. Like you're, that's like pretty much solid syrup that you're drinking. Yeah. <laughs> and so I try to mix like one of those with a whole gallon of water. And as I've been doing that, I've, I've found a lot more success. Good. That's I, I like that. That's a smart idea. Yeah. Don't forget sunglasses and hats. Don't forget shade. Mm -hmm. Don't forget to bring long sleeves and short sleeves. It might be windy. It might, be, you know, prepare for all contingencies. Um, and is there anything else for a minute? So what to eat, what to bring. As far as your warm up, let's just talk a little bit about the warm up and then I got to run. Uh, I got to mm -hmm. run foundation speeding. Uh, you want a big extensive warm up in the beginning of the day. You have to be going full throttle. You have to have already been at full throttle before your first point. That is crucial. If you're one of those teams that says, ah, I don't play good at the beginning, oh, I'm still warming up, or you're making that joke at, you know, seven, nine, and you're like, okay, now I feel warm. You're not an athlete. <laughs> you're not a competitor. You're not a champion. You need to be warm at before zero, zero. You need to be ready to rock. Okay. Um, so get your mind prime, get your body prime, and force yourself to sweat. And if you don't move maximum speed, maximum broad jumps, maximum squat jumps, and maximum sprint, if you don't do that before your first match, you are not ready to play that first point. You have to get your body to feel max effort before your first point. Then as the day goes on, you just make sure that between those matches, you get some good recovery, get your feet up. You can get some massage if you want, but don't go hardcore on deep tissue because that'll create some damage and that'll numb your Golgi tension organs, which means that basically your muscles contract slower. Uh, and you want to have that just consistent light eating. You don't want three heavy meals. You want to have about seven meals throughout a tournament and all just constantly just little, 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 little snacking. Uh, and when we're talking about the next warm up, you're not going to go through your full warm up again for every pool play match for everything like that. You just want to make sure that you do, you pick the movements that fix your immobilities, that fix your inefficiencies and that feel the best for you and make you feel good. But you don't have to go through the entire full warm up routine again. You do need to feel what max effort feels like quickly before that next match. Just don't burn it out. Uh, I would say 95% of people do not do that. 100%. You know, it's 100% it, it, 95%. Yeah, 100% that 90, 60% of the time it works every time. <laughs> um, yeah, so I, I and th I think that that's another thing where we just had a question from some uh, Guter. Uh, what if your first game is not great? PS, just the first one. I, is that, do you think he's talking about if the level of play isn't great? I think he messes with, I think a lot. Oh, he's just <laughs> messing with me. Um, but I think a lot of people, they think about this, you know, it, yeah. if you're, um, I know I've fallen for the trap a lot where I show up to a tournament, I'm the one, two, three, four seed, whatever. And I'm playing against somebody who is a 15, 16 seed. You know, and it's very easy to go into that game and, and relax and, and not even warm up. And then you're losing points. And I'll never forget, I've, I used to play with this guy, David Arnold in Virginia Beach, and his dad used to come to a lot of our tournaments. And um, and we ended up winning our first game. It was I think it was like 21 11 or something like mm -hmm. that. And we walked over and he was so mad at us. And, and I was just like, what, like, what's going on? Like we won the game. And he was like, yeah, but you could have won that. You could have beat that team 21, four, but you guys wasted eight extra points of energy. And then we ended up losing in the semi of the tournament. And he was, he, he just kept going back and he was like, when you can win games, you got to win games. And if, if you're not warmed up, then you're already putting yourself at a down a, a disadvantage. Yeah. So I, I think the warm up is definitely understated. 
All right. Well, guys, today uh, we're out of time. We're in a rush for this one. So we're going to head out. There's going to be no Q&A today. Uh, but thank you guys for coming. We hope we gave you some ideas on how to prepare for your tournament today. Uh, if you want to come to a clinic, we have up upcoming clinics. Just go to betteratbeach.com forward slash clinics. And we have uh, coming up in Ozark, Loveland, Ohio, Long Island, New York this weekend as we're filming. Uh, Huntsville, Alabama, and Westchester, New York, and we're adding some more. If you want to try our 60-day vertical jump program, we talked a lot about lifting today and max strength and max speed. Go ahead to betterbeach.com forward slash 60-day max vertical jump. I know that's a long URL. We'll get a better one, but you can always just check it out at the homepage, betterbeach.com. And um, that also comes with a full tournament checklist for eating, nutrition, and an eight-week nutrition challenge if you guys are interested. In um, speaking of challenges, I've got to go work with my seven-day athletic foundations app. So we got to sign off. All right, man. Have fun with those foundations, people, and then uh, have a safe flight out to New York. Thank you. Will I'll do. see you in a few days. See you in a few and days. I'll see you on the sand. See you on the sand. Have a good one.